think about where Bitcoin is in 50 years or 100 years, and it's probably a you know 500 or a million. But I bet at those levels, it the volatility has become so just it's almost like a currency. Gareth Soloway, the president and CFO of InTheMoneyStocks.com, has given his view on the current market situation. Soloway had previously tweeted that if Bitcoin breaks the $39,000 resistance level, it will stay within the $44,000, to $6,000 range before moving on to a higher resistance level or plunging once again. Now, the chief market strategist believes we may see Bitcoin rising to the $52,000 range within a few weeks. He also makes a long-term prediction for the cryptocurrency which he believes would have hit $500,000 to $1 million within 50 to 100 years. Welcome to Savvy Finance. This video examines Gareth Soloway's short-term and long-term predictions for Bitcoin. The trader and investor shares some interesting insights for the cryptocurrency, which continues to see immense adoption rates and support worldwide. If you find this video insightful, please give a thumbs up and check back for other videos on crypto. Let's dive right in. Gareth Soloway is the president and CFO of InTheMoneyStocks.com, a firm that prides itself in its ability to beat Wall Street elites. Soloway has been a loud and somewhat more realistic advocate for Bitcoin's growth and development. Late last year, when other analysts believed Bitcoin would hit the six figures, Soloway had a different opinion and called that the asset might even plunge down to $30,000 or lower. In a February 1 tweet, Soloway predicted that Bitcoin would rise to four to four or four to six thousand dollars if it broke the $40,000 resistance. The tweet reads, Notice the trouble Bitcoin is having breaking over the 39,000. However, if it can break above, Bitcoin has life to likely four to four to four to six thousand before needing to fight resistance. We have seen a close scenario build up over the past week. Now the technical analyst believes Bitcoin has the potential to rise to $52,000. Here is Solway's brief explanation on price movements and his short-term prediction for Bitcoin. I think it's been a great bounce on Bitcoin. Um, Bitcoin, there's no doubt that from the 69,000 high all the way down to 30, 33,000, I mean, it was just the nonstop selling, right? I mean, you got sideways chop, a few small bounces, but there was nothing significant. And now we're finally seeing that, that bigger bounce, which is usual. I mean, you do have it. In fact, I'll show my charts here. So some of the cool stuff about this, right? Oh, yeah, so I remember I, that trend line from Wendy's show. Yeah, or the parallel channel. Here. Yeah, yeah, this lower channel. I mean, it's just amazing, man. Tom, I know you're a technician, and I am too. And it, it's just, you know, some people call it like, you know, voodoo or whatever they call it. But I, I just think it's amazing how it works. And you can't deny stuff when it just works over and over again. So you can see here, this line up here was a perfect line connecting. This line down here was perfectly parallel. Where did Bitcoin stop to a T? right on that line and then you bounced up and one of the interesting thing is when you get this like wedge pattern right so this was a wedge pattern connecting the highs down it was also the 20 moving average mm -hmm. the probabilities if you look historically at this pattern is that you do exactly what bitcoin did which was hit it then pull back a little bit and then bust through right so you did get that little move to the upside now the question i have is is bitcoin into resistance here according to the charts it does have some resistance here there's a neckline of a head and shoulders kind of, you know, trend line here. You can see pivot, 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 and then pivot and look at the high on Bitcoin yesterday right to that point. What I'm kind of, you know, dissecting here, Tom, and you have some insight on this too, is like, are we going to just kind of consolidate and then break through it and go to 52,000? That's kind of my next resistance. Or is it going to, are we going to start to head right back down? Many leading figures and top analysts in the space have been talking about Bitcoin hitting another peak before the end of the cycle. These experts believe that during past cycles, the cryptocurrency has had a blow-off top from which it can make an 80 or 85% drawdown. Soloway does not see this happening anytime soon. The chief market strategist explains that he does not have enough data to believe in the four-year cycles. Since Bitcoin is still in its relatively young years, Soloway adds that it might be premature to expect another peak just based on past cycles. He also points out that the increasing fears of interest rate hikes in the US is putting pressure on the market and sucking liquidation. Here's Soloway talking about Bitcoin's four-year cycles. So kind of like a three mountaintop kind of peak with the April, November, and then one more. And, and I've heard that a lot. Like a lot of people have come out and said, okay, you know, I think we're going to 100,000 even by year end. Mm -hmm. You know, for me, it's, I mean, that would be quite something. And I'm trying to, on a macro view, think about, well, what has to happen, right? Because now you have the Federal Reserve saying, okay, well, we're going to raise interest rates. We're going to cut our balance sheet down, which is all sucking liquidity out of the system, right? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, somehow Bitcoin has to fight through that 
and fight through the damage that's been done to the psyche of the investors that bought in at 60 or 65,000, which it can do, but I got to believe it's going to come from institutions, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, the institutions are going to be the ones that say, all right, we believe in this. This is going to be the place to be. Let's get in. And then you might see that more upside. So it's definitely interesting. I mean, ultimately, you know, I, you know, I'm, I differ a little bit. I kind of, my, what I'm thinking is, you know, and again, this is so tricky, right? So we only have since 2009 data on Bitcoin, mm-hmm. right? Not so enough. we have, we have four, four year cycles, right? But it's only, you know, really it's only two, four year. Now we're in the third, four year cycle. So it's not like we have 20 years, yeah. 24 year cycles to go off of. So you don't know for sure. You know, all you can do is kind of look at the information you're given and, and try to make an educated guess. Amidst the noise and confusion of inflation and interest rate hikes, Soloway wants you to pay attention to Bitcoin's long-term growth potential. The CFO predicts that in 50 to 100 years, Bitcoin will be trading between $500,000 and $1 million with minimal volatility. He also talks about reports that Russia is set to accept Bitcoin as a currency. He explains that if this happens, other first world countries that still see Bitcoin as a threat to their currencies will come on board. Lastly, Soloway talks about Bitcoin regulation in the United States. To him, regulation will not be a bad idea as it would lend more credence to a cryptocurrency that many, especially older Americans, still see as weird and unreliable. Here is the trader and analyst views on Bitcoin's growth in the next 50 to 100 years. You know, you know, think about where Bitcoin is in 50 years or 100 years, and it's probably, you know, 500 or a million, but I bet at those levels, it, the volatility has become so just, it's almost like a currency, right? If you look mm-hmm. at a chart of the dollar, the dollar goes up or down slightly every day, but very minimal very volatility. Slightly. But that's kind of, you know, if, if you look at it in terms of the digital gold or, or a currency, that's kind of where you want it to go to, where it becomes a place to, to get away from the government's printing just endless supplies of cash, right? I think it's one more domino in in the longer term way this is going to go where you know you always have the beginning players out there the the big countries you can never expect the US or like you know China or England or you know you the European Union to do that initially right because they're the ones that are like trying to hold on to their currencies as being dominant they don't want any competition um and then you have kind of these rogue nations whether it's you know you know El Salvador or not really a rogue nation but but Russia where they're like well we don't care we're just going to upend the the status mm-hmm. quo right so you know Eventually, I think it does come to the bigger countries where people start to accept it, but you probably have to see that regulation come in first. Otherwise, the government is never going to want to recognize it without kind of safeguards in there. Now, again, I think we talked about it last time. I'm not a really person that's opposed to regulation as long as it's Mm -hmm. the right regulation. You know, like, I, you know, Fair I have enough. parents, I have, you know, we all have parents and we have, my, my parents are in there just about 70 years old and there's no way they're going near Bitcoin at this point, right? It's just, Probably it's just not. too weird. It's too volatile and you have, and there's not enough safeguards by the government yet. But if you can get that, I mean, again, just think about if, if a pension fund or there's, there's like a hundred trillion dollars in pension funds or whatever, you get 5% of their assets in cryptocurrencies. And right away, Bitcoin's already at half a, half a million dollars. And yeah. so that has to be the long way. It just has to be done right. Right. And I think honestly, the best thing for Bitcoin ever was that China started to ban it. Right. Because mm-hmm. it pushed all of the mining to the U S or not all of it, but a large chunk and now jobs, there's so many jobs. And even think about, you know, recently Microsoft bought, bought out Activision Blizzard, right? Which is another kind of pseudo crypto play. Yep. There's so much that's going to be built on top of it that it will make it impossible for the government to ever ban it, in my oh, opinion. Absolutely. Hurt, I mean, I mean, you'd see unemployment just jump and people, you know, that's you're never going to get a politician to go and go and try to do something. I mean, think about coal, right? I mean, mm-hmm. coal is the dirty, dirty coal, and and they still can't get rid of they it. They can't get rid of it. Jobs. Yep. So it's so it's it's the it's a good direction that we're heading, and I think it's very positive. It's just a matter of you know what is the Fed going to do here? Because I, that's the biggest wild card in my book is if the Fed keeps tightening and they suck out liquidity, the stock market goes down. It then sucks money out of crypto, and then you see do new lows on cryptocurrency. Amidst the political tension between Russia and the West, the country seems to be seeking more outlets that guarantee freedom from the U.S. and the rest of the Western world. And it might have seen an ally in Bitcoin. After an extended debate between President Putin and Russia's central bank, there are reports that Russia is set to legalize Bitcoin. If it does, it would be able to tax the thriving industry, which according to reports will fetch $13 billion in taxes for the country. According to a leaked government document, the Russian government is also rumored to have around $215 billion worth of cryptocurrencies. What do you think about Soloway's predictions for Bitcoin? 
Please share your thoughts in the comment section below. If you are yet to do so, please smash the like button and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching.